Alright, Brian Kazmarski back looking at multi segmental extension. It's a similar gross pattern opposite of flexion, which we just did. So, in multi segmental extension, feet again have to stay together, just looking for similarities. Arms start above the head. And in this position, we're looking at four things that have to count for it to be functional, not painful. And we're just looking at those. So, she's going to try it once. And we're looking at can the front of the hip, ASIS, Clear the front, clear the toes, so if we get past that, at the same time that when she does it, again, go, where the back of the shoulder blade, the scapula, can get past the heel. So a simultaneous shift from the hips going forward and the shoulder going back to neutralize and maintain position. We're also looking to see, can your arms get up to 170 degrees? So if straight up and down, as we call it 180, can we at least get to 170? So in this position, we can go hands together. I know you can't see in the video, or palms facing. We're looking at, can the arms even get directly above the shoulder? And the last thing we're kind of looking for is just in the action, a unified curve. This is a little bit more of the art than the science. Are we able to shift forward and backwards, have a uniform curve of the body and the spine? And can the arms get essentially over us in all in one fluid motion? Are we shifting forward, shifting backwards, and reaching? We want to be real picky on that. If you can accomplish all four of those things, and there's no pain, Functional, not painful. If you can do that, it looks beautiful, but that hurts. Functional, painful, okay? And if you cannot do it at any of those four checks, you're automatically in the dysfunctional category, and then what determines which one is if there's pain or no pain, okay? So that is the four criteria, the categories that you can be in, and then the four standards that you must meet to be able to do multi-segmental extension.